It's that time of year when many of the wine magazines and wine critics are coming out with their top 100 lists. I recently reviewed the Wine Spectator Top 100, and since that time I've taken a look at some of the other lists, including that from James Suckling. But by far the most impressive has been Jeb Dunnock's Top 100 Wines. Many of the wines featured on Jeb Dunnock's list have also been mentioned in my videos over this past year. So in this video, I'm going to highlight some of my favorite wines from Jeb Dunnock's Top 100 list and give you some additional recommendations that you may wish to consider. The first wine that caught my attention is the 2019 Lingua Franca Estate Chardonnay. This is a wine that Jeb Dunnock scored 94 points and sells for about $65 a bottle. Lingua Franca is a fairly young producer from Willamette Valley in Oregon. Specifically, it's located in the Eola Amity Hills area. Famous Burgundy winemaker Dominique Lafon is one of the principals behind Lingua Franca. And so even though this is a relatively young producer, they definitely know what they're doing. Eola Amity Hills is a fantastic area for Chardonnay, as the Van Duzer Corridor funnels cooling ocean breezes from the coast all the way to the vineyards in the afternoon when it's otherwise warm in the summertime. This helps to preserve acidity and freshness in the Chardonnay, and the result is some exceptional wines. This vineyard is located in an excellent area as well as it's right across the street from the famous Seven Springs Vineyard that's owned by Eveningland. Lingua Franca is an exciting producer, and I highly encourage you to try the wines, including this excellent Chardonnay that came in at 98 on Jeb Dunnock's Top 100. One of the reasons I appreciated Jeb Dunnock's list so much was the prevalence of champagne on his Top 100. And in particular, I'm a big fan of Laurent Perrier's Top Champagne, which is the Grand Cicle. The Grand Cicle Grand Cuvée No. 25 comes in at number 94 on Jeb Dunnock's list. It received a 97-point score and sells for about $159, which is much less than some of the other top champagnes. The story behind this wine is that Laurent Perrier recognized that it was extremely difficult to produce an exceptional champagne given the vintage variation in champagne. And so what they decided to do is blend a champagne, but they're not going to use champagne from every single vintage. Instead, they use fruit from three declared vintages. And so, for example, for Grand Cuvée No. 25, they use 10% of fruit from the 2006 vintage, 25% of fruit from the 2007 vintage, and 65% of the fruit from the outstanding 2008 vintage. And this wine is made from all Grand Cru fruit, 55% of which is Chardonnay, and 45% of which is Pinot Noir. This champagne aged an impressive 12 years on the lees before it was disgorged. I tasted this champagne earlier this year, and it was extremely impressive, but it is definitely one that will continue to improve with age on it. So I would recommend getting a few bottles so you can try one now, and then try one with some additional bottle age as well. Another champagne that I really enjoy on Jeb Dunnock's list is number 87 in Jeb Dunnock's Top 100. Specifically, I'm talking about the Delamotte Blanc de Blanc from the 2014 vintage. Delamotte is one of the producers that I tend to buy every single vintage. It's a relative value for a vintage champagne that sells for around $85 a bottle, and Jeb Dunnock gave this one a 94-point score. One of the best things about Jeb Dunnock's Top 100 is the widespread prevalence of recommendations from the northern and southern Rhone regions of France, which are two of my favorites. The number 84 ranked wine features exceptional quality for the price. This wine sells for only $40, yet received a 95-point rating. I'm talking about the 2020 Roger Sabone Chateauneuf du Pape Prestige. Roger Sabone is a stellar producer of Chateauneuf, and you really can't go wrong buying one of his excellent wines at only $40 a bottle. The Walla Walla AVA near the Washington-Oregon border has been an excellent source for wines from Rhone varietals for many years now. One of the leading producers there is Cayuse, and the Cayuse Grenache, God Only Knows comes in at 79 on Jeb Dunnock's Top 100. This 96-point rated wine sells for around $155. I'm a huge fan of Cayuse and have enjoyed their wines for many years. My personal preference is for the Syrah, but certainly the Grenache is very enjoyable as well. So if you have not yet tried a wine from Cayuse, I highly recommend it. If I had one criticism of Jeb Dunnock's list, it would be wine number 78 which is the 2015 Bodega Muga Prado Enia Grand Reserve, 
This wine received a 96 point rating and sells for about 100 bucks a bottle. While this is definitely an excellent wine from a top producer, my criticism is that the 2010 Lopez Heredia Reserva is an even better wine and it sells for about half the price. And so I think that there's an even better Spanish Rioja out there, although this one is excellent as well. While Pinot Noir from Willamette Valley, Oregon justifiably gets lots of recognition, I'm a huge fan of the Chardonnay from Willamette Valley. I typically go to Willamette Valley about once a year, and this past summer I was there with a group of people, many of whom did not like Chardonnay, but they were all extremely impressed with the Chardonnay from Willamette Valley as well, and Walter Scott is definitely one of my favorites. Number 75 rated wine was the Cuvée Anne from Walter Scott. This wine sells for about $45 a bottle and received a 92 point rating. Whenever I visit the Santa Barbara area, I always make it a point to visit the tasting rooms in Los Olivos. And one of the must visits there, and one of my favorite places to visit, is Bien Nacido. The Bien Nacido Estate Pinot Noir from the 2020 vintage finished number 68 in Jeb Dunnick's Top 100. This excellent Pinot Noir sells for about $60 and received a 96 point rating. While 2020 in California can be a bit problematic due to some of the damage caused by the fires, the Santa Barbara area largely escaped the damage from the fires. Bien Nacido Vineyard was first planted in 1973. It's an extremely famous and well-known vineyard in California, and it's one that's produced lots of outstanding fruit for top bottlings for many years. It's from the Santa Maria Valley AVA, and it's a cool climate vineyard. And so the wines from this vineyard are known for having refreshing acidity and freshness that I really appreciate. If you have not tried any wines from Bien Nacido yet, I highly recommend it. The 2019 M. Chapoudier Saint Joseph Le Granit came in at number 64 on Jeb Dunnick's Top 100. This outstanding Syrah based wine sells for around $90 and it received a 95 point rating. While many Northern Rhone wines, such as those from Hermitage and Cornas, require a little bit of extra bottle aging before you can enjoy them, this is one that you can actually enjoy when it's younger, but it will certainly age up to 10 to 15 years as well. So it's a very versatile wine and one that I think you would enjoy having in your cellar. This is a wine that I actually featured in my Northern Rhone video earlier this year. And in that video, I also mentioned that you can get the 2020 Futures for about $65 a bottle, and that vintage is excellent as well. Smith Aunt Lafitte has been doing an exceptional job lately, and so it was no surprise to me that the 2019 Smith Aunt Lafitte came in at number 57 in Jim Dunnick's Top 100. This exceptional wine received a 98 point score from Jeb Dunnick, yet sells for about $120, which is much less than some of the other top Bordeaux in the outstanding 2019 vintage. Certainly a small fraction of what you'd pay for some of the first growths. It's one that will need at least four to five years of additional bottle age before you should dig in though, as it is a little bit structured and certainly one that will improve with age. If the 1855 classification of Bordeaux were done over today, there's no doubt in my mind that La Mission Aubryon would receive first growth status. La Mission Aubryon is one of my absolute favorite producers in Bordeaux, and the 2019 vintage received a perfect 100 point score from Jeb Dunnick. This wine comes in at number 45 on his list. It sells for a little bit less than $400 in the US, which is less than some of the first growths. So definitely one that I would highly recommend if you're looking for a splurge and one to put in your cellar. When I visited the Northern Rhone region of France a few years ago, one of my absolute favorite visits was to a very small producer in Cornas named Johann Michel. Johann spoke very, very little English and I spoke even less French, but we nevertheless had a fantastic time drinking his excellent wines and we certainly got along very well despite the language barrier. And so I was extremely pleased to see that Jeb Dunnock had rated the 2019 Johann Michel Cornas the number 42 wine on his top 100 wines for 2022. This exceptional Cornas received a 95 point score and sells for about $55 a bottle. While I'm a fan of the red wines produced by Johann Michel, I also enjoyed a white wine, which is a Saint Perret, that was a Marsan based wine. So definitely, by all means, give one of these wines a try if we're able to locate any wines from producer Johann Michel. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. 
I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level four diploma from the WSET. So I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. Poyac-based Pichon Barone and Pichon Lalande have long been two of my favorite Bordeaux producers. Both of these producers are second gross in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux. These producers are both widely considered to be super seconds as well which means that in some top vintages, their wines can even rival that of the first growth producers. Both of these wines did extremely well in Jeb Donick's top 100 this year. The Pichon Baron comes in at number 38. This impressive wine sells for $175 a bottle and has a 98 point rating from Jeb Donick. The Pichon Lalande received a 99 point score and came in at number 26 on the top 100. This wine sells for around $250 a bottle. So both of these are definitely two of my favorites and some that I plan on putting in my cellar as well. The Jagondas AOC in the Southern Rhone region of France is oftentimes overshadowed by Chateauneuf du Pape. So I was extremely pleased to see that Jeb Dunnick awarded a perfect 100 point score to a Jagondas based wine, specifically the 2019 Chateau Saint-Combe Jagondas La Poste. Chateau Saint-Combe is certainly a producer that I regularly recommend, and in fact, I recently recommended the outstanding Cote de Rhone from this producer a few weeks ago. But this wine is definitely a level up at a perfect 100 point score, and this one sells for about $95 a bottle. Earlier this year, I published a video on my favorite Bordeaux for $75 or less. One of those wines was featured in Jeb Dunnick's Top 100, which comes in at number 34 in Jeb Dunnick's Top 100 the second growth in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux. It's based in Margot, and Jeb Dunnick gave this wine a 96 point rating. This is a wine that you can actually enjoy young, but it will certainly improve with additional bottle age as well. Really an excellent value, and you just can't go wrong with this wine. The wine that has to have the best quality to price ratio of any of the wines in Jeb Dunnick's list has to be the number 32 wine on the list which received an impressive 99 point score, yet sells for only $46 a bottle. I'm talking about the Tensley Turner Vineyard Syrah, which is from Santa Barbara County. The fruit for this wine comes from a cool climate vineyard, and so it's made in more of a French style. If there's one problem with this wine, however, it's that it's made in very, very low production, only about 50 cases per year. And so you may not be able to locate this wine for the 2020 vintage. But there is a mailing list, and so I definitely recommend that you get on it if this sounds like a wine that you would be interested in. A few weeks ago, I produced a video on my top 10 Bordeaux for $50 a bottle, and so I was extremely pleased that one of my recommendations came in at number 11 on Jeb Dunnick's Top 100 for 2022, namely the 2019 Malart de Gravière from Pessac Léonion. This impressive wine received a 96-point score from Jeb Dunnick, and sells for around $45 to $50 a bottle. This Bordeaux is a blend that consists of 56% Cabernet Sauvignon, 41% Merlot, and 3% Cabernet Franc. This is a wine that should age for at least a couple more years in the bottle before you enjoy it, but will cruise in the cellar for up to two decades. One of the reasons this producer is doing so well right now is because they recently invested substantially in renovating the cellars and reinvigorating the vineyards. Those investments have paid off handsomely, and now they're producing some exceptional wines. This is definitely a producer that's on a tear lately, and one that I think will become well-known in the marketplace in a few more years. And at that point, the prices will definitely be much higher than they are today. So it's definitely one that we should stock up on while we still have a chance. One of my all-time favorite producers is E. Gigal from the Rhone region of France. Gigal is responsible for some of my all-time favorite wine experiences, including the incredible Lala wines, one of which is Le Turc. The 2017 Le Turc received a perfect 100-point score from Jeb Dunnick and finished number 9 in his top 100 for this year. This incredible wine is 93% Syrah and 7% Viognier. The Viognier and Syrah are co-fermented, and the inclusion of this white wine results in a little bit of a lifted aromatic profile, including some floral aromatics that I really appreciate. If you have not tried any of the Lala wines, or Le Turc in particular, 
There are definitely some bucket list wines and wines that I highly recommend. Ever since I started wine collecting, I've always had a bit of a value focus. And so when I first started collecting Bordeaux, I was naturally drawn to Leoville Barton. Leoville Barton is a second growth in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux that's located in Saint Julien. Nevertheless, it's known for having extremely high quality wines that sell for very fair prices. And so it's no surprise to me that the 2019 vintage of Leoville Barton finished number seven in Jeb Dunnick's top 100 wines for this year. This impressive wine received an outstanding 97 point score, yet sells for $110 a bottle. Another wine that I featured in my Northern Rhone video earlier this year finished an impressive number four in Jeb Dunnick's top 100 for this year. Specifically, I'm talking about the outstanding 2019 Bernard Lavette Cote Roti La Chave Roche. This impressive wine received a 99 point score and sells for around $110 a bottle. This is an extremely exciting wine and one that I cannot recommend highly enough if you're a fan of Cote Roti. This wine can be too intense for some people. This wine has actually been described as, quote, a ferocious wine, unique in its uninhibited expression of the smells and flavors of the appellation. So if you're a fan of Cote Roti like I am, this is absolutely one to seek out. They import about 2,400 bottles of it to the United States, so you'll definitely need to do a little bit of digging to find it, but it's well worth seeking out. The Jagondas finished number three in Jeb Dunnick's Top 100 for this year. Namely, the 2019 Domaine Saint Damien Jagondas. This wine received an impressive 97 points, yet sells for only $36. This is an absolutely exceptional buy, as are the Cote de Rhone's that are produced by this outstanding producer. This outstanding Jagondas based producer is known for harvesting somewhat late, and they also harvest very, very low yields. The result is wines that have impressive concentration. Another one of my favorite producers finished number two in the Jeb Dunnick Top 100 this year. Lynch Bage is a fifth growth in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux that is located in Poyac. Nevertheless, in top vintages, Lynch Bage can produce some absolutely phenomenal wines. That was the case in 2019, and Jeb Dunnick awarded a perfect 100-point score to the 2019 Lynch Bage, so they absolutely knocked it out of the park this vintage. You'll definitely want to wait at least seven to eight years, if not more, before you start enjoying this wine, as it is incredibly structured and it will get much better with some additional bottle age. This is definitely one to stock up on as it received a perfect 100 point score, and it's quite unusual to be able to get a 100 point Bordeaux for $160 per bottle.